fear. What are, what is your greatest, your greatest fear? Go ahead and drop that in the comments section. I would love, love to know. What, what, what's your greatest fear? And when you think about it, because we're going to dive into something that holds so many of us back from reaching our full potential. What's your greatest fear? What is it that stands between you and destiny? What is it that if you were able to remove it could potentially unlock or remove the stumbling block for you to live that abundant life we claim every day. Don't be afraid. Come on, drop that in the comments section, your greatest fear. And as I'm looking here online, I'm starting to see you all populate the stream, living life with regrets. My God. Greatest fear is that of the, the unknown. Greatest fear, lack of independence. Greatest fear of being hurt. My goodness. Greatest fear, not being able to care for myself as I age. My God. Greatest fear. Fear of failure. Greatest fear, my God, y'all are being so transparent. Harm to my son. Greatest fear, Lord Jesus, my children, I feel you. Not reaching their full potential. Leaving greatness on the table. Greatest fear, loss of my independence. What if I told you? And thank you for sharing, but, but what if I told you we're not just going to talk about and label your greatest fears if you hang out with me for a little while We're going to put, a, get put together a plan to conquer them. Not just talk about it, but a plan to conquer it. Greatest fears. That sound like a plan, you all? Because before we dive into anything, I want us to remember that we are children of God. He has given us the power and authority to face and overcome our, our fears. Are you ready? Not just going to talk about it. We're about to be about it. We're not just going to talk about it. We are going to face it and conquer it. I feel you, Dimitri, growing old. We're going to claim it today. Now, I want you to get this verse in your, your spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the Spirit, for God's, the Spirit of God, gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I'm going to read it again because I messed it up. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Are y'all hearing this today? Now, 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 now. In, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 
I don't want you to miss where, where, where I'm going with this. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I want you to understand this context before we do some, some heavy lifting. Now, now, a little background on, on Timothy. Now, it's one of what we call the pastoral epistles. Are y'all hearing me on this today? Now, what that means is that it's written by Paul to Timothy to give him instructions on how to handle God's people. Now, Timothy is Paul's protege. And when this particular book was written, Paul was in prison in Rome. Now, in addition to Paul being in prison, now they faced challenges as a church. They faced difficulties as a church. And during this period, they were under the rule of Nero, the emperor, who was hostile towards God's people. And if you go back and read history, Nero set the city on fire and then he blames the people of God to initiate persecution against them. And this led to martyrdom. This is how when you travel and visit Rome and you see the remains of the Colosseum, that was where they would take believers throw them to lions. Lions who were starved and then ripped to shreds and torn to pieces, Nero would use believers as lampposts. You know how we go outside and we see the street lights? Now, could you imagine a human being with tar all over them set a fire to, to illuminate the streets of Rome? Nero. So it was in the context of this passage that Paul is writing Timothy to encourage him in faith and in ministry. Wait a minute, in the midst of intense persecution? Yes. In the midst of being thrown to lions to be entertainment in the Colosseum? Yes. In the midst of being tarred and let a fire to illuminate the streets of Rome? Yes. And on top of that, Paul is in prison waiting for his pending death. And he says, in the midst of all of this, what's the one thing that I can do for the kingdom of God? And so he writes these final instructions as encouragement to Timothy, urging him to remain faithful and steadfast in the midst of persecution and opposition. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. In the midst of all of this persecution, opposition, resistance, pending death, lit to give light, serve to the lions and gladiators. Paul writes this, for God <laughs> has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Look at this, what it says. This is our foundation and cornerstone. Y'all know I'm about to pick some meat off of that bone. We're not meant to live in fear. We're meant to live in power, love, and soundness of mind. Y'all all right? Now, now, now watch this. On top of all of this, remember, Paul's about to die. So this verse is an exhortation, reminding him that as a follower of Christ, 
Don't be overwhelmed by timidity, but rely on the power of God, the love of Christ, and a sound mind to face whatever challenges that lie ahead. A reminder to remain strong and courageous. A reminder to trust in God's power and love even when adversity seems to be winning the race. Teach Clarence Edward. Now on the heels of this, the text says that power and love and sound mind our foundation and our cornerstone. I'm about to land the plane, you all. I had to explain the text. Now, on, on top of that, I want you to get your greatest fear again. And we want to juxtapose this based upon the B part of what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 7 or the A part. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind, our foundation and cornerstone. So y'all ready for this? I want to give you the first step. And I want you to jot this down. Digital Pass is going to help you out as well. But if you want to screenshot it, do what you got to do. First step comes from the life of, of David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. It says, and this is David when facing Goliath. God, we're going to eat well today. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion, and the paw of the bear, will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord will be with you. Digital pastors, help me out. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion to the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. That's right. I'm about to give you the cheat code to courage, to pass jaywalk towards your destiny in order to conquer your Fear. And now the first step is you got to say it with authority. Fear is a liar, <laughs> but your faith is your amplifier. Teach this, Clarence Edward. The first thing that you've got to understand is that courage does not come from you. Fear is a liar. But your faith is an amplifier. Y'all don't believe me? Man, man, let me go ahead on and, and teach this thing like I, I really see it. I, I tried to show you in the text. I tried to show you in the text. I tried to show you in the text. Look at what it says right here with David facing Goliath. The Lord who delivered me, there it is, from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, would deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Lord, fair is a liar, but your faith is your amplifier. See, fear can make you feel helpless and overwhelmed, but faith in God gives us the strength and the courage to face whatever challenges that we, that lie ahead. God has given us the power to overcome and, 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 and to achieve our goals. And that's why David says, wait a minute, who is this Philistine talking trash to God's people? Who is this dude that can just walk up into our camp and say these things about my God? Wait a minute, no, uh -uh, no, no, no. God done delivered me from the hand of a lion. I done fought lions, man. I done fought bears. Surely, you won't be a challenge for me 
because I done been up against things that should have took me out. Now, I just need to pause because I need me about 100 crazy praises to go in right now. You think that whatever it is that's coming up against you has a shot because you've taken life's best punches. You've taken life's best blows. You've taken life's betrayals. You've taken life's ridicule. And these are the things that would have taken lesser people out, but because the Lord is with you. <laughs> you done seen this thing before. Teach this, Clarence Edwin. Well, 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 I'm doing the best that I can. David says, I know God's going to deliver me. I haven't seen this fight before. Might have been in a different format, might have been a different person, but I came through that. I know I will come through this. This wasn't about skill with the slingshot. No, it was about faith in God. Fear is a liar, but your faith is your amplifier. Did y'all read the text like I read it? Man, I pray y'all y'all read the text like I read it because I need to put this back up here for, 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 for somebody to see it. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. I'm going to put it back up here so you can see it. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and paw of the bear will deliver, will present tense deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. I love what y'all are putting in the comment section. My God, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Fear is your liar. But your faith is your amplifier. Could I give you another point? My God, I got nine minutes. Could I go ahead and give you a uh huh? What? One more point. Check this out. Check this out. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Y'all already know this passage. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. These are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Not only is fear a liar, but your faith is your amplifier. Here's the second step, second step. You can't unlock your future if you're handcuffed to your fear. Mm, mm, mm. You teaching this better than they responding, Clarence Edward. See, somebody go ahead, do me a favor and drop this in the comment section. You can't conquer what you won't confront. Some of us, some of you have been, you've been running from your fears too long. To confront your fears and move forward, you must have faith in God's plan that it's a good plan. Even when I have setbacks, it's a good plan. Even when I, I feel like I can't go on, it's a good plan. Even when I'm meeting adversity, it's a good plan. Even when I'm facing my Goliath as David did, it's a good plan. Even when I have setbacks, it's a good plan. Trusting in God's goodness is the first step towards conquering those fears and living that preferred life. It's time to turn this thing around and, and face it. You can't unlock your future. You're still handcuffed to fear. A couple of weeks ago, I asked the question, man, who, 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 who was your Goliath? Teach this, Clarence Edward. Who, who, who is your Goliath? Is it a failing relationship? Is it a job that you hate, but you're too scared to leave? Is it a dream that seems too big to achieve? You've got to name it 
and then confront it? Because you cannot unlock your future if you are handcuffed to fear. Mm. <sighs> How can I put this? Can I, let me let me put this where the goats can get it. Let me put it where the goats can get it. Y'all all right? Now, 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 now watch this. You know what handcuffs do, right? Handcuffs restrict the movement. When, when, when your hands are cuffed, and I don't know nothing about this, but I got some members who, who assured me <laughs> that it's tough to move when you have handcuffs. You can't run right if you have handcuffs. You can't uh, tie your shoes if you have on handcuffs. You can't get dressed adequately when you have handcuffs. And see, that's what fear does right there. That's what fear, fear does. It has your handcuffed. And so destiny is in front of you, but because fear has your handcuffed, Got to name it and confront it. And when we do that, God gets the glory. All right, you all, let me go ahead and land the plane. First step, fear is a liar, but faith is your amplifier. <clears throat> and then step two, you can't unlock your future if you're handcuffed to your fears. Y'all ready for the final step? Proverbs. Chapter 18, verse 21. I'm about to land the plane. I promise you that, Tasha. I'm about to land the plane. It says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Your words have power. Here it is, step three, you all, and we out of here. God's plan is bigger than your panic. <laughs> Clarence Edward, man, God's plan is bigger than your panic. you teaching this better than they respond in junior. Trust the author and not the chapter that you're stuck in. Mm. Ah. Your, your words, they have power. And that's why whenever you come up against a bleak situation, speak life. You've got to remind yourself of all that God has done for you in the past, speak life. Lean into him and find peace in his promises. Speak life. Stop speaking death into your life. Stop speaking defeat into your life. Stop saying I can't. Stop saying I won't. Stop saying I'll never. Speak life. Philippians. Chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I tried to tell you all as we made our transition as a church, you've got to protect the ear gate. You've got to protect what comes into your ears. You've got to protect uh -huh, what people say. You, you've got to protect who you let around you. You've got to protect who you let speak to you. You've got to protect who you let whisper in your ear. If you have to, you got to get up, get away, get you around people who speak life. Who speak life. God's plan is bigger than your panic. Uh, I have no idea of who I'm talking to today. I don't even know who this message is for, but, but I believe God sent me here today to speak life to you. To let you know it ain't over. You just
you're stuck in a chapter. But the book ain't finished. You're just stuck on page three in a 20 page chapter. Don't give up, speak life. You gotta change your circumstances. Listen to a podcast that speaks life. Listen to some of my messages that speak life. But you stuck in a chapter. And that chapter is almost over. God's plan is bigger than your panic. Are you help are you are you hearing me today? Now here's what I want you to consider. This is a type of message that has to live with you. Type of message. So, every Monday, I send out what I call the breakdown, where I break down this message, and I give you the YouTube timestamps to go to a particular section in the message. I give you a five-day daily devotional that speaks life into you and I make this available to every person who's a part of our email list two ways you can get on it because I want to speak life I want to be one of the people that speaks life you can text the word notes n-o-t-e-s notes to 33777 Digital pastors, go ahead and drop that in the comment section. Text the word notes to 33777. Follow a couple of prompts. Maybe you in. You'll be on that list tomorrow. You will be on that list to receive what I like to call life-giving words. Or you can scan this QR code right here on the screen. You can scan that QR code. It'll take you to a page to opt in and you can start living that life, that abundant life that we talk about.